All right, there we go. Hello, everyone. How's it going? Team here, and this is BXJS DevStream. It's been a while since we have one, and um, even though I am quite tired today, I thought, you know, we... <laughs> I've promised this to you for quite some time, so I hadn't. I've, blah, let me try this again. I finally have to do this, right? So, no way, uh, no point in delaying all of that. No point in waiting even longer because, to be honest, I don't even remember what we did last time. So I'm gonna go and check the um, commit log now. So we, all right, we migrated to MongoDB for search, and that was basically it. So I'm guessing we're going to be in, um, improving our search and our article storage today and actually making it into something interesting, right? So last time here, we actually written that uh, this to do should be removed from here. So last time we written that um, downloading and saving the articles into the MongoDB which is, I guess it works, but actually if we look at the, um, uh, so there was one problem that I did, like, I mean, it's not exactly a problem, but uh, the issue was that we got the data, first of all, we don't need that console log over here. And uh, what happened is every time we get the new dump of the data from BXGS for the latest episode, we are actually importing all the articles again and again and again and every week the same and there's like billions of errors in our um, endpoint, right? So if I remember correctly, this should now point to my server if, if, if that is, yeah, there we go. Okay, so we can say exoframe logs uh, this one, right? Copy, paste, uh, whoops, that is too much. And yeah, that is going to be long likely. And yeah, as you can see here, basically every time it executes the saving, there is duplicate errors. And every time there's going to be more and more of them, right? This is, I mean, it's okay. It's just error messages, but it's inefficient, right? So because MongoDB to reject a document takes way longer than if we would filter that manually. So what I'm going to do is... I'm gonna expand this saving a bit or change it a bit, I guess, to actually uh, take into account the fact that this might be a duplicate, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get currently stored uh, documents and um, I guess docu uh, documents um, URLs. So because we don't care about the whole documents, we just want URLs and that's going to be a wait article. Um, I guess we want map reduce. And now I need to remember how to write map reduce because this is a thing I never remember MongoDB. Uh, no, I guess we want mongoose map reduce example. This is what I typically do. Just look up the example and uh, adjust it to whatever you want. So we got I think it takes like two functions. First one map then reduce and then something else. Uh, so it takes O, which is an object, and O has map, and O has reduce. So, okay, so this takes an object, SN has map, and you have to write like a full function because it's going to be sent to the Mongo, right? Uh, it cannot be arrow function if I remember this correctly, otherwise it will break. This is not what we want. Uh, okay, so map, we're going to emit... For map, we're going to emit this dot URLs in our case because we don't really care about everything else, right? So we literally take one property. And uh, for reduce, it's essentially just going to be, okay, it takes ID and ages. So it's going to be a uh, reduce function receives an array of ages that are grouped by ID, uh, which in this case is gender. Okay, so it gets the first prime. Okay, so you got to emit two things. Is that how it works? Wait a second. MongoDB map reduce. Um, if I remember correctly, the MongoDB map reduce is slightly different. I might be mistaken because it's been a while since I've written any of these queries. Okay, so you do get, so you have to emit, I guess, this, um, let's emit this underscore ID and then URLs, right? So this is what we want to emit. In this case, we're going to get ID and then URLs. And, uh, what we want to return is just URLs, right? If I remember correctly, we don't need uh, essentially just return URLs. This should return the array of URLs. And then I'm just going to return over here and we're going to debug this live because hell if I remember how to write all of this stuff. 
Okay, so we got this, we got this, uh, we will have to trigger our server uh, hook manually. So I'm just going to disable the validation for now. Uh, and this, this is just going to be that. I, I guess we don't even need that, do we? We can manually just call the process data thing. So we don't care about the server for now, actually. Right. Um, so yeah, we can just, uh, just do this. There we go. That is the worst way to write this but you know what it works okay so we got this i need to start the mongodb right uh, npm run oh boy i already forgot everything we did last time basically that is not very nice mongo starts is what i want to say no what not starts that is okay i don't have docker running that is also not good i actually want uh, want to run mongo volume because we do have do we have a Mongo volume in here? I think we do, right? Indexes. No, we actually don't. Okay, so we might as well npm run Mongo volume. And I guess we would have to re import. Uh, where is my Docker? It's still starting. So we would have to rerun the import first uh, before we actually can do um, any map reduce things. I guess we would just run this. Don't write in 2db. And yeah, so first we fix this thing, then we add some crawling, I guess, at this stage, and we'll see how much time I have left. And uh, but the idea is essentially to at least extract the page metadata and full text today. So to schedule the background, I guess, maybe worker threads or something uh, that would do the crawling every, I don't know. So it, it basically, we don't want to crawl it immediately because this, this is what gets you banned, essentially your servers. This is never nice. So we want to, especially since we don't care much about, um, we don't care much about the speed of crawling. Uh, we're going to just throttle it and do it nicely with a few seconds delay, right? But okay, first of all, we got to run this thing. And uh, first of all, we got to start the MongoDB. And you don't like what? Uh, error conflict the container. Oh, okay, wait a second. So we already have it running. Oh, okay. Uh, wait a second. Start bxjs. Maybe we don't need to import anything. Uh, so we're gonna start it back. Docker, let's see, Docker, exec, um, what was it, Docker exec, I think, right? Am I remembering commands correctly, I think? Minus IT, bxjs, mongo. I'm mean, just gonna go into shell, ne okay, uh, vin pty thing. Oh man, I forgot. Vin. Ah, there we go. Okay, so this is what we want. In PTY not found. What do you mean not found? Do it does it needs to be in does it needs to live? Oh man, I forgot how to do this. Oh god, okay. Let's just try it from the this side. Docker exec minus IT. And uh, we need to say bxjs mongo and just say shell. There we go, now it works. Okay, um let me remember what our our credential is. Oh, server runtime config. So we had a config over here and it is use bxjs, right? And then db gets collection names. So let me just uh, articles count. So let me just make sure that we, okay, we have some articles there. And um, let me just do limits one. Okay, so we got some stuff there, uh, which means we can just start working with that without uh, any need to re import stuff, which is good for us. So we can actually put that back, right? So this is our URLs. And uh, here's the question, what would it actually output? So you're gonna go nodes, um, server, slash data processor. And after a few seconds, that is actually taking longer than I thought it would. Okay, that's I mean, so we get what is it? It's an uh, it's an object that contains results and what? Uh, okay, so and stats. All right, so we want essentially results from here, right? Results, and we actually want to say URLs is gonna be results map r to r dot value. This is what we want. And I'm guessing that now if we do this, we should get a nice long array of pure strings. Perfect. All right, so we do that. 
then we download the thing. Um, so get currently stored document URLs. Right, uh, and this is the URL, sorry, why are you complaining? Because I'm not using it, right. So next thing we wanna do is filter um, fetched data using existing URLs, right? So const new data, let's call it new data. I'm gonna say uh, it's gonna be data filter. So that item is item URLs. And we basically just wanna say that URLs includes item URLs and it does not include it, right? So this is what we wanna say. Let me just return here just to make sure that um, we're actually running correct new data length got new items. There we go. All right, um, let's just run this and see how that works. I think that should be fine. Come on. Oh, yeah, it's long because it actually downloads the right there we go 171 link sounds about right. Last time we worked on it was like four weeks ago, three weeks ago. So that's like three, four episodes, which kind of aligns, right? So we got the new data. And now we're only gonna store the new data. Right? And theoretically, now once we run this, we should not get any errors on duplicates. Error validating URLs should not be empty. Uh, that is an interesting thing. Okay, um, I guess maybe there was some. Right, so I guess let's just do item URLs, uh, URLs and item, I guess like this, right? So in this case, we should get, since I already imported everything, it should just be blank and say, okay, we're done, cool. So we did that, I guess it's a good idea to commit this. Uh, we are gonna do exactly that. Git add, git commit. So only save documents that have not been already saved, right? So this will improve performance quite a bit. Cool. So now what we need to do is we need to actually schedule um, some sort of a worker, as I said, that would actually iterate over our database and uh, process all the articles and save, like resave them, I guess, update them with the full data. I mean, we already have the strict false here. I'm, I'm not sure if that's a good idea or not. We're gonna see, but maybe it will be better to define the strict schema in the end, at least once we know completely. But for now, I think it's fine. So essentially what we want to do is, okay, so we got this process thing that loads the data into the database, right? So now we need the um, crawler, I guess. Let's call it crawler.js. And this is gonna be our crawler that is gonna get the articles and, 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 and enrich them, right? This is what I'm trying to say. So, right, so we need fetch, we need article, we need crawl function that is gonna be working. And I think it's gonna be a sync as well because we are gonna be fetching all those articles. And uh, yeah, so how do we go about this? We need, I mean, okay, for now, let's just query all articles. Articles is gonna be await article finds, literally just get everything, right? Uh, in the end, we're gonna, we, we essentially the idea is to have here a query that would say only give me articles that have not been processed yet, meaning they don't have uh, full text or whatever, um, metadata, HTML. I guess, you know what, what we could do? We could start by just, um, so I guess we could, we could transform it into a two-phase crawl. We would have the phase one where the crawler would actually fetch the page text, HTML or whatever you prefer, right? And then we would have a stage two that would actually um, work on the data that is, or HTML that has been fetched. I guess maybe that's the best idea. I don't know, do we? So when you crawl the pages, is there anything beyond full HTML that is interesting? I'm guessing not, right? So we're, we're literally only interested in HTML because if you inspect, like if we take the BXGS website, if we take one of the latest uh, URLs, like say, I don't know, let's take a library, for example, Overmind. 
If we take the page source, we have the meta tags that are interesting. So there is, for example, I, I mean, I don't know how much, <laughs> how much info the icon would give us, but there is, for example, description, which is interesting title, which is interesting, right? Other than that, uh, right. So this page, for example, doesn't really contain any useful information with regards to SEO or anything like this. It seems to be dynamically loaded actually. So the page source is actually useless. Hmm, that might be additional challenge. So we might want to set up the um, puppeteer or something along those lines to actually crawl those in a more um, kind of, you know, in a better way, essentially. But again, if we take GitHub, then I think you should have the more meaningful link tags here. We got the title, we got the, okay, this is open search. Yeah, we got the, for example, the OG stuff, which is the cards that are used, for example, on Twitter, I think. We got some uh, Google site. Okay, there's some additional things. User. Yeah, I guess basically fetching HTML and then maybe, hmm, how do we go about that? So. I mean, I guess we could just ignore the websites that don't work without JavaScript because like, come on, it's 2019, SSR is not that hard to set up. So we just won't crawl you, you know what? We'll, we'll, we're gonna do this for now, right? And I'm gonna go to DB and I'm gonna say that we're gonna have full HTML, which is gonna be a string, right? And uh, in this case, we're gonna select, uh, hey, uncle, welcome to the stream. So in this case, we are gonna select uh, all articles that HTML, uh, wait, full HTML, um, I believe it was dollar exists false, right? Eh, let me just clarify that. MongoDB exists false, uh, exist fields. I think it is like this. I'm, I'm, I'm always screwing up the, yeah, so field exists, Boolean false, right? So we're gonna select all the articles that don't yet have um, full HTML, right? We select that and then we're gonna go for const article of articles. So we're gonna iterate over them because we don't wanna run in parallel, right? Uh, because if we run in parallel, that would mean we could hit the crawling limits or be considered a malicious actor and then the hoster bans us and this is something I don't wanna deal with. So we're just gonna be doing it slowly and nicely, right? All right, so we got the article. We are gonna say that we got the URL. Um, I guess URLs would be, all right, there is another problem. We actually have multiple URLs, but I guess in this case, we can just take the first one. I don't know if like how much value the other ones will add. So URLs and then zero. And uh, you know what, for now, we're just gonna run tests in place and see how that works out. So we just write this tiny crawler and, um, plug it in and I guess for the, this would be the whole stream essentially, but I'm guessing this would take like 20, 30 more minutes. So we are gonna see console log URL, right? So, and uh, break, I guess we're just gonna break it just to test the server slash crawler. H, uh, that is not what I want. Uh, all right, we're at URLs set, I believe is what we need to use, right? Because it used, there we go. So it actually has our URL. And uh, what we wanna do now is we wanna fetch it, right? So I'm gonna say const full uh, HTML equals fetch URL, then R, R, um, okay. How do you get fetch HTML? How do you get HTML from fetch? <laughs> That is, uh, I think it's dot text, but I am not sure. I I think it is dot text, right? Returning HTML with fetch. Dot JSON, yes, it is just dot text. There we go. Okay, so that should work. And uh, console log full HTML. Right. Um, oh, God, of course. Uh, I've got awaits. We need to await this thing. There we go. So we got the full HTML over here. Again, you know, this won't work on apps that are not server side rendered, but this is a React beyond React blog and it seems to contain everything that we essentially want, right? So we got the full HTML. Um, 
I'm, I'm just thinking, so we could just run the processors in place because like literally we want to do what? We want to one extract meta tags. We want to two run uh, content, main content uh, extraction. And three, we want, I guess, run tags entities um, extraction on content, right? Uh, so actually on the textual content. I don't know if we need anything else, so we might as well just code it in place. Um, so let's see if there is any libraries that would just do this for us. Because, uh, so meta tags, do we have anything fitting? Berkeley HTML meta tags generate. No, I don't need, okay. Uh, Node.js extract meta tags. There's gotta be a package that does it, right? Meta extractor, that sounds like what we need. Uh, does it work on text? Get meta, ah, cool, okay. So uh, it depends on Cheerio, that is very heavy and I don't know if I wanna drag that in. Um, so let's see, what is this one? Meta extractor, title, description, char set, theme, RSS, all open graph metadata, this looks really good actually. Does it depend on anything that is like 200 megabytes uh, or not? Dependencies, file type, goat, uh, HTML parser. Right, so I guess it's extract URI, Rx meta. Okay, so it directly extracts from URI, which is not perfect. Can we maybe do it without the URI? Parse meta, attribute, parse feed, create HTML parser. Like this is essentially what I want, but um, you know, without the fetching, because we are also interested in the body. Uh, hey, Kevin, welcome to the stream. All right, I mean, this is a good option, but it doesn't it doesn't seem to return the uh, the MIME and extend. Yeah, it doesn't seem to return the body itself. So I would would want to await the double fetching. Of course, we could just use the Cheerio ourselves, but. Ugh. Node.js retrieve meta tags, uh, maybe this one open. Yeah, you know, I mean, like, I just want to say, okay, maybe let's just do meta gets. Yep, nope, this is, I think this is the one we were looking at. Like, I don't want to parse myself because there is a lot of different possibilities with this meta tags, right? Fetch response text, domino create window document, get metadata document URL. What is Domino? I never heard about it. Node.js. No, I don't want pizza. I want, I want Node.js package. Server-side DOM implementation based on Mozilla. Uh, oh, why do you have to work on DOM? Come on. Like this. I, you know what? I guess that's just... Uh... Oh boy. Okay. So what do I want? Cheerio or do I want uh, Domino? Oh, this is actually Mozilla library. This might might not be that bad then. Okay, so wait a second, bundle phobia, let's compare. So you got Cheerio, which is I know pretty big. So like 320 kilobytes. That's actually quite smaller. So the older versions, yeah, okay. Not, not that much change to be honest. Okay, and we got Domino. Domino, I think, okay, more or less the same basically, right? Yeah, it's just not, not much difference, but it's a library maintained by Mozilla. I mean, we could go for that. We could go for that. So we got this, right. And I remember Mozilla also had um, recently open sourced their library for extracting the main content from the page, which hell if I remember how it was called. Um, Firefox accounts, application service, uh, visual, visual test suits. What was the name of it? God damn it, I saw it somewhere, but I do so much. Okay, um, content maybe, content. And it should be JavaScript. Uh, offline content, planet content. <laughs> Prospector, was it this one? No, this is something different. That it okay uh, okay let's try word extract like they have <laughs> almost 2000 repositories how the hell do you find anything in here 
Extract data from GitHub API, JSX get text. Extract the text now, that's not what we want. That is not what we want. Um, body, like I, okay, Mozilla content, uh, content extract library. I saw it like, uh, was it readability? Some version of readability leap. Yeah, there we go. This is what I was talking about. So it also needs the document. Okay, so I guess we're rolling with uh, Domino and this parser and readability. So let us just, oh, you know what? I forgot to disable my oh, virus threat protection because if I don't do that, our npm install is gonna be painfully slow and we don't want that, right? So we want npm install. Um, we want Domino, we want page metadata parser, and we want readability. Does it work in browser? It should work in browser, right? Uh, sorry, in, in Node.js. Example, this is JS DOM. What is the package name? Come on. It's gotta be published on NPM, right? Readability, I hope it is on NPM. All right, to get that, that means that we can just copy this part and say, okay, here is our get metadata and domino. Right, so we, once we get that, we, okay, this is our HTML, this is what we do. So we take the HTML, we um, construct documents from HTML, all HTML, right? And then we're gonna extract meta tags. And I hope this works. Okay, uh, and metadata, so metadata now. And we also want to run readability, right? And how do we run that? So we the reader, read event, da, 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 okay. And this is what we want to do here. I do prefer consts to my lets, there we go. So in readability is something we need to import. Uh, let me just rearrange this a tiny bit. Uh, yes, we put our import separately. Uh, const read, uh, readability. Oh man, I am too tired to think straight. But okay, uh, readability. Let me just uh, make sure that it actually works. Okay, so we have a typos everywhere, right? Document window documents. I guess we don't need document window documents. We just say documents, right? I think maybe. Let's let's try this. So then we go metadata and article, and uh, hopefully, ta ta ta. Where's my notes? There we go. Um, readability. Okay, so maybe it needs to be doc. What was it? Uh, document dot window dot document. Do you want like nested document? Is that how it works? Here's a question: Does it work with their Domino library? Because if it doesn't, that will be amusing. Yes, it actually doesn't. Huh. Okay. Well, Mozilla. <laughs> All right, so they actually have a DOM library, but they work with a different one. Document clone nodes, parse, optional. Document parse, right, so. Huh. I am curious, so we got this, right? Why does it complain? Okay, let's see. HTML frame element of undefined. All right, so that review it. Uh -huh. I guess it requires some additional things that are not in the domino, which is a bit, uh, a bit annoying, but I guess, you know, this thing was made for the browser, so it kind of makes sense, but okay. Uh, no, um, I guess we want, uh, okay. First of all, let's just check if our metadata extraction works because this is kind of, the bit that we're right now interested in. Oh wait, did I did I screw it up? So okay, first of all, it seems like just importing readability is also doesn't even work, right? Okay, so there we go. There's the metadata. Metadata extraction works pretty nicely, actually. That is kind of cool. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add, so this is, let's call it extracted properties. And it's gonna be full HTML metadata, me, 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 metadata, there we go. It's gonna be just an object with whatever we throw in there. Um, and we need to parse the content somehow. So I guess we're not getting it from here, but we're gonna be like, okay, 
What is extract extract text? Is that is that a thing? PDF text extract. Uh, okay, let's see. Node.js extract HTML content. Like I know there is this unfluff thing. Exactly, this is what I used. Typically, it's it's okay-ish, but I wonder if there is anything more modern than this. Uh, automatic. Automatically extract body content. Um, Node.js automatically extract body content. That is will obviously give me unfluff, but uh, is this the unfluff as well? Node unfluff. It is also node unfluff. Right. Uh, let's see. Is there is there twenty two comments? Is there anything else? Readability JS. Is that the same readability or is it the different one? Here's the question. Uh, since the original was abandoned to start a web service. Okay, I guess this is something completely different. Huh. I mean, you know what, let's just go with unfluff for now. And later on, if any of you guys know any good library that would do this for us, just let me know and we can swap it up, right? So it's just gonna, just gonna use unfluff because why not? I know that it works like it's not perfect, but um, at least it delivers results in a pretty fast manner. Right, so we got this, we got extraction, const, uh, let's call it extracted data. And I guess in this case, my HTML data is going to be full HTML, right? And uh, we're going to log metadata and extracted data. And theoretically, we should now see a nice body. And this is the extracted data. Oh, it actually, wait, it actually extracts the keywords and, and all that other stuff too. But here's the question. Does it actually extracts like Twitter things and, and things and, and all that open graph th metadata? Um, okay, wait a second, open graph, open, no, it doesn't, right? And I guess the, the other one, the page metadata parser, I think it, was extracting open graph, right? So because I'm I'm quite interested in open graph. Yes, it does support open graph Twitter. And okay, so we are leaving this because this seems to be better for metadata. And we are just gonna go and grab the text. Um, so this is basically just text is what is interesting here. Because everything else is essentially already in the metadata. Da -da -da -da. And Twitter for updates. That seems to be either this page sneak peek beyond react. I like, is that, is that actually correct? Is that what the, oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, that is, that seems fair. Okay, cool. I have to make a website where user will be able to upload, update their resume PDF file and the admin will be able to download all the PDFs as a zip. I don't have credit card for Azure Amazon Web Services. I'm thinking of Google Drive API. Is there a better file hosting service? Um, I mean, just use whatever you want. It's like Google, I, I'm not sure Google, is Google Drive API free actually? Because majority of Google's APIs are actually paid. I typically, whenever we had a case like this, we either had a dedicated server for that or we just used existing APIs for storage because they are way cheaper. Like you won't get any cheaper storage than Amazon Web Services S3, for example. So, you know, just have to poke around and see what works for you. All right, so we got the unfluff, we got the text. Um, Tags and entity extraction, right. So we need to run some Node.js tags extraction. Um, I think there was some, no, the key, keywords extraction, right? So not the tags, keywords extraction. There was a bunch of libraries that were kind of good. Uh, again, not as, you know, not as good as the core NLP, for example, from Stanford team, but for our purposes, that should be okay. Preferably something that's been updated, well, within a couple of months, I guess. No rake, uh, no rake implementation, la la la, run kit. We could take rake. I mean, it's always, it's it's a nice algorithm, but maybe just uh, retext. 
I guess retext would be the best one, right? Because this is sort of very powerful uh, language toolkit and maybe we're gonna use it for something else. We're gonna npm install retext, uh, retext keywords, and we also need that NLCST parser. Um, I don't know if we need to v file thing because we don't know, we're not gonna save it anyway, right? So we are, throw that in, um, take, this into const, retext keywords to string. So we are gonna say this, right? Set up the retext. And where is the extraction? Okay, so you, you call it process on something. Okay, so uh, in our case, I guess let's make a function of it. Extract, uh, key, um, yeah, keywords is what we want, right? And it's going to be text and it's going to return new promise resolve. And this is going to be process uh, file, the compatible file. Can we do this? Can we do this from text? Uh, because I don't really want to do this with some weird file thing. Uh, so we have blah, blah, blah. Credit cards are not popular in India on the debit cards, but um, I mean, isn't there a way to get like a virtual credit card or something among those lines? Plus, for example, I, I also don't really have a credit card. I only have the German debit cards. Those work online in the majority of places without um, any problems, to be honest. I, I just try it with your card. Maybe it just works. Okay, how do you use the retext with... Um, right, they have a demo here. Is there... I don't know. Yeah, of course, I have to go into the source over here and see how it's made. We got uh, build.js. There we go. Okay, retext English, retext keywords. And where is retext? Uh, okay, now this is keyword okay keywords how do you use it use use keywords so we got okay so you can construct the processor like this got it so this could be on processor uh, let's call it re retext processor and stands can be retext processor process uh do, 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 and then Right, so we got the processor, where is it used? Run sync, processor parse. Oh, so you can just throw in a text, god damn it. Processor parse, processor run sync. You get the tree back, okay. Um, right, so what does it, file data error file. <sighs> Do they have a proper, <sighs> Sometimes it's just too annoying to use any of those libraries because they don't have proper examples. Right, so here they are using text in fixtures. Cool, okay, so this is exactly what I want. Pro process fixture. So it seems like you can just throw in a text, right? So this is, we can just do that. And then you're gonna get error results. I guess we should do a resolve reject here and then be like, okay, reject error. Um, right, if error reject error is what we want to say, and then return. And then if we are not rejected, uh, where is the way to parse it? It is over here. File data keywords, there we go. Oh, and key, we got the keywords and key phrases, okay. Const, um, right, you know what? I'm just gonna use destruction. So we got this, we're gonna be data and Keywords, uh, right, so I think I'm just gonna say keywords and uh, key phrases from data, right? And then we need to map them, const result. I, no, I guess it will be better to, okay, let me think. I am, oh boy, okay, data, keywords, map okay k2 and we need to map it to k matches node zero right that is a bit cumbersome but i hope that works 
console log do we need to string there this to string is this where is this coming from oh this is the, okay so we need to wrap this thing into to string okay there we go this looks fine okay and then we need const key phrases and there's gonna be data key phrase uh, no not key phrases there's gonna be k to da, 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 value stringify that is a very elaborate way of mapping it okay so we do this and then stringify goes on top somewhere right uh over here i guess let me just rewrite this a bit stringify value i guess we just do this right so it's a nice one-liner stringify that extract keywords uh it's gonna be k i guess in this case yeah let's call it p is gonna be phrase join okay and then we're gonna do resolve keywords and key phrases save it and we'll get the text okay we're gonna say keywords and key phrases is gonna be uh, a wait um what, what, what did you call it extract keywords extract keywords and it's gonna be text console log okay let's see metadata text and keywords and key phrases right so theoretically if i run it now i didn't screw anything up that should work right yep it does i mean it's yeah it's like not perfect but it's it's okay i guess i mean we can try a different keyword library like the, the rake one for example i don't know if it's going to be better but let's try yeah i'm install rake and this is our rake if it's better then it's nicer to have like one library instead of five so this is our retext this is rake and then uh rake is it synchronous or asynchronous it is uh synchronous okay and it literally just returns you keywords so we can can just say and this on keywords equal rake generates text right let's see how that works out this better or at least you know if it's the same quality then can it reach for each of undefined what do you mean for each of undefined where is this coming from rake index what do you not like um rake generates opts you need to options is stop words do you want does it need like uh text that is not split by line is that what you want replace we need to replace slash n slash r and it actually should be any of those plus globally for nothing right i think that should do it yep there we go uh that is not better <laughs> okay well a bit disappointing but okay it's fine we can we can just use retext it's not a big deal all right npm rm node rake okay so we're gonna stick with unfluff and retext for that we got this stuff and so we got this we fetched it we did all this stuff so next thing we need to save it right so we need to say okay article find one find by id and update is what we want id is gonna be article id and update is gonna be dollar sets and um this is gonna be full uh full god damn it full html right on data so this is what we want to set data and we're gonna wait that so this should update the data extracted properties we should declare those there as well so we got the metadata we got the text which should be a string we got the keywords which is an array of strings and we got the key phrases which is an array of strings as well i don't know if we want both i guess we'll just go for the keywords and what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna merge those two 
Um, so instead of doing this, I'm just going to say, okay, extract keywords. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say const results going to equal uh, array from expanded new set. So I'm just going to combine this into say keywords concat with key phrases, right? And resolve with result. There we go. Okay. Construct results. Uh, da, 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 da. Update documents in DB and break. All right. Um, console log. Let's just see. So console results. Updated results data. So theoretically, now if we run it twice, we should see two different documents updated, right? This is the first one, which is exactly the one we saw already, the sneak peek beyond React 16 React block. And if we run it again, we should see a different one. And it seems to be working actually, right? So this is, um, where's the title? On fly web P encoding with Wasm. Perfect. That seems to be working okay. So if I now go into the Docker, no, not here. Here I cannot do that. Uh, over here. So where was my Docker exec? There we go. Mongo use bxjs articles find limit one. So we should actually see the first article with all the enriched data. Perfect. So it actually works as expected. And now instead of break, I'm going to introduce a sleep function. Right. So we're going to have const sleep is going to be time. It's going to return new promise that is basically going to be resolved after set timeout. Nope, set timeout. Uh, resolve after time. And uh, we're just going to sleep for. I got to wait that, right? So we're going to sleep for. Sleep for two seconds to uh, evade bans, basically, right? So for two seconds, I think that should be fine. And then we just continue until we are done with all the articles. That's basically it. Now here's the deal. So this crawler right now is working live, right? So if we just trigger that uh, and the other one is still executing, it's not going to be helpful. So we need some sort of a queue. So as in to say, hey, you should actually um, start working again once you are done. There is more than one way of doing that. But uh, there, I think I recently saw a nice package. Wow, no, that's not what I wanted to say. <laughs> um, right, I recently saw a nice package that allowed you to queue things. I don't remember what was the name of it. Okay, so this seems to be relatively popular. This seems to be relatively popular as well. Queue ads. Uh, is this from Yeah, it is from Syndrosaurus. We might as well just take that because his stuff is always good. What else do we have here? Graceful Redis. No, we don't need Redis. We need something very stupid and very simple. Bull job manager. We don't need jobs. We need a very, very simple tiny queue. Maybe something like this. There's also FastQ from Matteo Kalina, who's also quite good. Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, I mean, we might just as well go for the... This has been you know, it's relatively updated as well. And let's see. So what does this offer us? Push, 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 Q pop, Q peak, Q length, tiny Q. No, this is not what we want. So we actually want this, right? You add and pause. Okay, so all right, so we literally just add it to Q and then Q executes whatever, right? Auto starts and Q the Q method size getter. Okay, uh, very cute. No, this is as soon as they are added. Yeah, okay, cool. So that seems like probably what we want. So let me just add that npm install pq. And we're going to have this tiny queue over here. Right, we have uh, a lot of dependencies, but okay. That is we can try to figure out a way later to, you know, sort of make them nicer. 
So DB um, model, right? Prepare retext. Uh, permissified uh, keywords extraction method uh, function, I guess. Right. Uh, so we got sleep function and core crawl function. Right. So now we need. There's our queue. Create new queue. That is used by external colors, right? So we got that. We want concurrency one and we also want auto start default true. So we don't care about that. And essentially add is only thing that we care about, right? So what we need to do is we need to say that module exports um, is function that essentially just says Q add crawl right so basically as soon as someone calls the crawler it's just gonna enqueue the next execution once the previous one is done and that's basically it we can throw in console log done crawling um execution i guess something like this that should be fine and essentially what we just do here is we just say const crawler I guess schedule crawler require blah, 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 no that should be crawler right and uh, we just say schedule a crawler to get uh, full HTML text ta uh, metadata metadata and ADC, let's just call it this way. We just call schedule crawler here. And actually that is it. Um, right, I think, I think we're done basically with this, right? So here's the deal. I don't really wanna commit that to master right now because if I push this to master, it will auto deploy on our server and we'll start crawling everything and I'm not sure we're finished with this. So what I'm gonna do, Git branch develop. I'm gonna create a branch called develop. What? Git so develop. Uh, there we go. Git adds. Git commit. Implement basic crawler. That uh, right. I probably should do this properly. There we go. Implement basic article crawler. Uh, -da crawler fetches full article HTML extracts uh, text metadata and keywords and that's it right so we didn't do anything else so we had the metadata text and keywords right um, data as well as keywords and stores them to db right uh commit that cool i think i mean okay you know what let's just do this origin develop so i'm just gonna check if everything looks fine and then i'm gonna send a pull request against the master branch and merge it and redeploy it um, because why the hell delay that if something breaks i can always fix that but just for my sanity, I'm gonna do a pull request and uh, we're gonna say implement basic crawler, right? So this is what we did, create a pull request and just uh, review the code real quick, see that everything is actually fine. We got a package log diff, which is fine. We added a bunch of new packages, which is also fine. We have, uh, this is snark down. Why is it? Oh, no, wait. Oh, right, because it has a comma. I was like, it was there. Right, so we added the crawler, which, okay, so we queue this, we get the articles, we process them in sequence, we fetch the stuff, we sleep correctly. Seems fine. Uh, right, data processor now 
does the whole thing with MapReduce and only saving the new articles and then enqueues the crawler. And we got extended schema for the database. It looks looks okay, right? Um, conversation. So let us merge it and then hope the website doesn't actually break. <laughs> this is basically my uh, my plan. Sounds very solid, right? Right. We also have like a RSS feed plan and everything. Man, I should really remember what the hell I was doing before I stopped streaming and uh, became busy with the uh, different things. Okay, um, I think we are actually done for today. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to throw them into the chat right now. If not, if you missed any of this, the source code is on uh, GitHub. The video will be available as VOD on Twitch immediately or on YouTube after you know it's exported in a couple of seconds. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. I think that Travis should be running the deployment now. Uh, one running, yes, there's the website. So it should deploy it and then I hope it doesn't blow up and doesn't break. I'm gonna make sure it's the case, but yeah, that's basically it. So doesn't seem like there's any questions. So thank you guys very much for watching. That will be it for today. Um, right, so we're gonna have the usual BXGS weekly podcast on Saturday and I think I'm gonna be playing some Division 2 closed beta tomorrow or on Friday, so stay tuned if you are into video games, we're gonna do some of that. Other than that, uh, everything's more or less uh, back to, you know, the same schedule I used to have, uh, so we're gonna be doing this more regularly now, I hope, unless something happens again and I have to go somewhere again, but, you know, I, <laughs> I'm so tired of this, I hope um i it's kind of i feel bad saying about it. i hope it doesn't happen because if it happens it's it's okay but man i just want to sit at home and do things you know <laughs> this but there we go all right guys thank you very much for watching i hope you enjoyed it i see you next time and uh, have a great evening bye